Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com with another episode of Cubase Tips for the week of August 8th, 2025. Today, let's talk about chord modifiers. When you're looking at the chord pads in the lower zone and you go to the little MIDI icon in the upper right that stands for the remote settings and click on that. If you go to the first tab that says pad remote control, on the right, there's an option that says chord modifiers. Right now, it's all grayed out. If we check the box that says activate, everything comes alive. You'll see in this list that we have three different choices of voicing modifiers, tension modifiers, and then finally an option for transpose modifiers. These are a set of options previously I haven't spent much time with, but once I started exploring what was available here and what it can offer to our music, let's just say this is one of those options in Cubase that again, you can easily walk away going, Wow, I never really knew it could do that. It's really pretty exciting, some of the options available here. Let's see if you agree. Like some of the other things we've looked at, before you can really use these options, you have to set up certain kinds of triggering keys. If you look here under the voicing modifiers, you have an option that says the next voicing or the previous voicing. If we use these options, we have to go to the drop-down list, either click on it or simply spin it with your mouse wheel if you have one, and you'll see the different notes appear. And if you look down at the virtual keyboard, you'll see a kind of an aqua colored key show up. And as you spin this note, you can decide where you want to move it. For this demonstration, I'm going to put it on the key of D0. And then for this drop down below it that says the previous voicing, again, I'm going to spin the notes. I'm going to move that till I see C0. So now when I look down at these keys, I have two aqua colored keys. There's another option here that says modify all pad voicings. And you can hit that and either set it for aftertouch, pitch bend, or in this case, it's checked on controller. If it's checked on the controller option, then you would go to the list below that. Again, spin your mouse and decide what controller number that you want to use. If we use controller one like it has here, that means the modulation wheel is going to control these voicing modifiers as well. Now, let me show you what this does. We have to hit OK to close the screen. At this point, what happens is I play the pad. If I come down and hit either the C0 or this D0 key, it changes the octave and voicings of these different pads. Either up or down. Which is pretty amazing to pull off when you're using just one finger. We're able to record that MIDI data as well as play it. If we open up the MIDI part, you can see how all these different octaves and voicings are changing throughout this MIDI part. But where it becomes really fun and amazing what you can do, we go to the mod wheel, which we've assigned with controller one, play our same chord pads, and simply by moving the modulation wheel, we can change all those different chord voicings. And you can come up with some MIDI parts that if you were to try to play them would be very difficult. And now you can simply hit them with one finger. If you record and play this way using this modulation wheel, the modulation data is no longer recorded, only the different octaves from the different notes. All right, going back into our pad remote area, I'm gonna take all these voicings, reset them back to nothing. I'm gonna go to this area that says modify the pad voicings, change that to no modifier. And then if I move down to this area that says tension modifiers, I'm basically gonna set up the exact same thing. I'll put the remote key at C0, fewer tensions at D0. And once again, I'm gonna turn the controller on and set it to the modulation wheel. What happens now is I can go ahead and hit those remote keys and it will now change the tensions. When you're using the remote keys, you can change the tensions of individual pads. But once again, by using this modulation wheel and having it change all of these pads, this is basically an amazing option because now you can play things like this. where you can hit the pads, move the modulation wheel, and change all these different tensions. Very common in any kind of jazz playing. Just really an expressive way to be able to play. And I can do it with one finger. If I change the pad, go back,
I'm just hitting that one key and turning the modulation wheel. And if I hit the record button, all of these different tensions will be recorded onto this track. I am really impressed with this option and what it allows us to do. All right, let's look at our last option. Go back to the remote settings button. If we come down to the bottom, it says transpose modifiers. Again, we can set up a key if we want. On this one, let's just go for the pitch bend wheel. We can select it from this drop down list of transpose all pads. Say OK. And now if I move the pitch bend wheel and you look at the pads and the chord editor over on the right, it goes through the pitch of every one of the pads. If I go back and hit a pad. I can move through all the keys. So once again, the amount of creative things you can come up with doing this and keeping the modulation wheel still changing the tensions. In other words, if I turn the modulation wheel up, all those tensions change and I use the pitch bend again. I can see using that right in the middle of a break of a song and everyone will be like, where in the world did that come from? Changing the different pads, the tensions, a different pad, different pitch, and different tensions. Then again, if we record this stuff on the piano track. Open that MIDI track up. All that different data has now been captured in real time. I mean, that is just crazy. The amount of musical possibilities you can come up with. So if you're looking for something a little different than the way you've been doing things, take a second, open up this chord remote button, activate these options, set up the different key remote controllers, and have a go at creating some sounds that more than likely you would have never been able to create any other way. So have some fun with all those tips, go make some great music, and then I'll see you next time. All right, it's gonna wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we had a look at the dialog box and the options available under the chord remote button. We looked at the voicing modifiers, the tension modifiers, and the transpose modifiers. We saw how to activate all these different functions, set up remote control keys, and different controllers like your modulation wheel or your pitch bend, played through a bunch of different examples, and saw how this could all be recorded onto a track in real time, allowing us to come up with some musical ideas that go way beyond anything typical that we're always doing most of the time. And we will continue to explore all these different features and functions and all the creative tools that are available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.